a couple of days ago, I released this video, which was a review of the DeLorean. And although I still agree that it's a fantastic model, and anybody who's a fan of the film should just go out and buy it, I did say in that video that there was a few things I did want to mod on it. And if you guys like the mods I do to the car in this video, you can head over to my website where you can find a part list and instructions. The link will be below, but without further ado, here's 10 things you can do to your DeLorean set to make it that slight bit more detailed. Now I want to start off with taking a look at some of the minifigures. This stand is just awful in my opinion, and I plan to make a new one that can hold the previous figures as well, as I'd much rather display the Back to the Future 1 figures with this DeLorean than, well, this DeLorean. But because these figures are from 2013, I wanted to give Marty a slightly updated hairpiece. This one here from the Han Solo figures I believe works the best as Marty's default hair. I think his hair is a lot more wavy than this, and parts roughly in the center. Now I know some people may disagree with this, but in my opinion, this is just the best look for him. The torso and legs, though, I think are just great. Moving on to Back to the Future 2, we need to do something about that face print. Young Han Solo just doesn't work in this case, especially if we're planning on putting the Han Solo hair on this Marty as well. And considering we've already got a unique face print for Marty McFly, why don't we just use that one? I'm going to use the alternative face just to give a bit of variation on this figure, and as you can see, it works much better. The only thing is, now that we have this Marty McFly from Back to the Future 2, it's only right we give him the hoverboard. Now this is a minifig scale hoverboard, not the one that came in the DeLorean, and this is from LEGO Dimensions. It's a fantastic piece that unfortunately shot way up in value when this set came out, so I don't know how much this piece will cost you these days, but I'm very glad I have one so I can put it on display with these guys. But obviously, as we have a Back to the Future 1 and 2 figures, these are relatively easy, and I could just put these two figures either side of the stand and call it a day, but considering I really want all three versions of these figures and I don't want to wait for LEGO to do it, I figured I'd custom make Marty and Doc from Back to the Future 3 in the Western style. And here is Doc. Now he is using the same face print as the one that came in this set. You can see his alternate face is the one with the goggles, which obviously we don't want to use for the Western one. So I've swapped it round to give that nice Doc face print, considering the other two Docs are using the other two face prints anyway. The body here is from Endor Han Solo. Now again, he's a very difficult figure to get a hold of, but he is wearing the most accurate clothing that I can find Doc to be wearing. I also really like that his torso print continues on into the leg printing to show that long jacket he wears throughout this third film. Now, unfortunately, they don't make a cowboy hat with white tufts of hair out of the back, and it would definitely need to be a new piece if LEGO were to make Back to the Future 3 sets, but I've just used a regular Doc Brown hair piece and put the hat in his hands, just because putting the hat on his head doesn't really look right, but this definitely works in my opinion. As for Marty, I really like this figure. I've used the body and legs from Poe Dameron, which once again has some really nice leg printing as well as torso printing with that brown scarf around the neck like Marty also wears throughout this film. The arms I've used are from Grip Hook from Harry Potter CMF Series 2, just to give the striping down the arms, and although it's not the most accurate to the scene, I think it's accurate enough. Now, as you can see, you can't really see the torso printing at all because I've used this really nice poncho piece from Farm Boy Luke in the Land Speeder. This truly is a figure that holds a lot of other figures within it. And as for the head, I've used the angry side of the young Han Solo face, mainly because we're not putting the hairpiece on this figure, as I'll put the hat on this figure, so it won't look too much like Han Solo. But there's all three versions of the figures throughout all three films. But unfortunately, I've given some accessories and some I haven't. I'd like these other figures to have accessories too. Now, I'm not usually one for customizing bricks, but I have been getting into custom prints lately. And although this video isn't sponsored by Firestar Toys, I do want to talk a little bit about the accessories that they've printed for these kind of figures. Starting with the ones that are good for minifigures, I want to give Marty from Back to the Future 1 this photo of his brother and sister. I really like how Marty, his brother, and his sister are depicted as minifigures within the photograph, and you can tell that the Firestar Toys team enjoyed designing these prints. They are UV printed, so you can see a slight bit of the texturing, but if I'm honest, for 15 quid, it's really not a bad set of tiles. As for Doc from Back to the Future 1, I want to give him the letter that Marty writes him that says do not open till 1985. Then that completes my Back to the Future 1 lineup. Like I say, for Back to the Future 2, we've already dealt with accessories. For Back to the Future 3, though, I want to give Marty this little revolver piece that I found to represent his gun through the film, and I also want to give Doc this little photo of them standing in front of the clock face. Now I think it's time to build a little stand for all of these figures to go on, and also do a better job of presenting that plaque that you get with the original set. <laughs> what 
I came up with. It holds all six figures in a 1-2-3 configuration, and behind the Back to the Future 2 figures, we have a levitating sign that's in the Back to the Future 2 2015 style, similar to the floating signs that you'd see across the roads. And if you ask me, is the perfect way to display all of these minifigures and this new plaque in front of the car. Speaking of the car, I think it's time to get to work on that. I'm going to split this down into some movies to make this a bit easier to follow, and we're going to start with Back to the Future 1. Now the Back to the Future 1 time machine is a really good representation and honestly, without changing massive amounts of interior detail, there's not really much we can do here. But one thing I did complain about when I was reviewing the set was how the plutonium box was just way too small and had no plutonium detailing. So when constructing the mods for this video, that was something I definitely knew I wanted to do. I'll make a new plutonium box and it doesn't matter if it doesn't go underneath the hood because I'll just display it outside of the car like it was in the film. So long as there's some plutonium on the inside to just give that extra detail. And here's what I came up with. Now this is one of the larger crates which I didn't even know existed till trying to make this video. There's unfortunately no sticker detailing as I don't want to cut up my own sticker sheet but is something I plan to do when more sticker sheets become available on Bricklink. And opening up this box you can see that we've got full canisters of plutonium. Now I've constructed these in a full purist way. There is another way that you can do it by taking these same one by one canister pieces and just cutting up a red flex tube. But because I'm not Satan, I don't plan on cutting flex tubes, Planet Tech. Instead, I went with this method, which I would deem doesn't look as accurate, but it is full purist, and if you ask me, looks perfectly acceptable for the plutonium that we see in the film. If you're planning on displaying the Back to the Future 1 model, and you want to do the Twin Pines Mall scene instead of the one with the giant hook on the back, I would recommend looking into doing this mod as well as buying the T2 camper van, as there's absolutely no coincidence that the same designer who designed the DeLorean also designed that car, and it's exactly the same colour as the one seen in the film, as even in the designer video, he's driving that same camper van around. For Back to the Future 2, again, there's not really a lot we can do to the model considering the Back to the Future 2 car is very well represented. There are a few things though that I will say complement the Back to the Future 2 version very well, starting off with these newspapers, once again from the Firestar Toys pack. Now these are printed on a 2x2 tile, meaning they're probably more towards minifigures, but I think they work well with this car as well. But if I'm honest, the best tile here is probably this one. This is the Almanac from Back to the Future 2, it's printed on a nice 2x3 tile, and I must say the printing on it is really nice for UV printing. It's 100% in the same scale as the DeLorean, as it looks too big to fit in a minifigure's hand, but is 100% something I'm just going to stick on the dashboard if I'm displaying in the Back to the Future 2 version. As for something I think is necessary if you're displaying the Back to the Future 2 version is some form of display stand. These 1x2 trans clear bricks just don't cut it, and I think putting it up on a display stand, especially one that's angled, looks very nice, and by taking the red bar off of the wheels, don't worry, you can still put it into hover mode, it allows you to put the car at this really nice angle and not worry about the car falling off. Now obviously with every display stand I want to say be careful where you're putting your Lego sets, as if it does fall off of this height you're looking at a big repair, but trust me it does look way cooler like this. To complement this look I'm going to add the little flag tassels that you see at the end of Back to the Future 2 right before the car gets struck by lightning, and that's everything I'd say for Back to the Future 2. This is the best way to display it in my opinion, and like I say Lego did a good job on representing the car. Now continuing into the last film here, this is where the DeLorean gets the most visually interesting for me. And although it was lovely to see LEGO include a hood box for the top of the car, they unfortunately decided to go with the white wall tyres for the 1955 version of this car instead of the 1885 version with the train wheels. And granted, that is the same things they did with their LEGO Ideas version so long ago, so frankly I was expecting it, but that didn't stop me trying to put this car on some rails, because I just think that is the best scene throughout all of these films. But just before that, how are we going to get the car up to 88 miles per hour? Well, I've constructed these little three logs, which are the same ones that Doc puts into the firebox to make the train go faster. The only interior mod that we're going to include on this is this little black wire with this little gauge so Marty can monitor when these logs are going to fire. A great little Back to the Future 3 edition, but again would be pointless if we weren't putting this on some rails. Speaking of which, 
I think we need some wheels. Now I've seen a few other people try and attempt this mod as well, but if I'm honest, some of them are a bit rushed to get out early, I would say. I wanted to make sure that if I was going to do this, it would be a sound structure and it would look good and display well on the rails. And that first off meant making a wheel, and that's a new wheel from scratch, not just removing the tires off of the wheel we already got in the set, as the wheels used in the film were custom made ones made by Doc for the DeLorean to sit nicely on the rail. Now, I tried several versions of these wheels and ended up settling on these ones. They are a combination of round tiles and a wagon wheel piece, which end up being roughly the same size as the original DeLorean wheel, which was very important because I wanted the proportions to look good. The rails, however, they were a lot bigger than I thought. The rails ended up being about 500 pieces, just because I wanted everything tiled off, and although I was going to do some form of desert detail, I actually ran out of money for this project. Hence why I'm planning to do another DeLorean Mods video in the future, so make sure you subscribe for that. But putting these rails down, you can see that the car fits nicely on the rails, and because of the wheel conversion, actually locks to the wheels a bit nicer, and although I don't see these getting past a LEGO stability expert anytime soon, I still think these rails work very well with the wheels. This Back to the Future 3 version is the way that I am going to display this model, hence why I've probably put a little bit more money into the third version, but this along with the stand is a fantastic set of modifications to do to your set, even if you plan to display the other versions. And like I say, if you want to attempt any of these mods or just get a part list, you can head over to my website tommycbricks.com, take a look at all of the instructions over there which will include some modifications and original builds. Those who are asking for the Ecto-1 stuff, that should be up there by now, along with this DeLorean instructions and part list. I'll see you over there on the website, but at the same time, why not check out my original review on this car if you haven't seen it, as I talk a lot about the interior details I want to change in the next mods video. Now that I have this DeLorean on the rails, should I build the train? In the same scale? Is that doable? I, th I think that might be doable. Subscribe.